Okay, so today our story is going to be on a road trip, all right? And the people that, the two men that we're talking about are starting right here in New York. And I'm up here in New York, okay? And you guys are down there in Vermont, White, and well, yeah, White River Junction. And you're all over the place, but you're, you know, so here, here the, here's the map and here's some distances. And this road trip is going to take the men into New York City. Uh-oh, I've got my thumb over where I'm talking about. But anyway, that's not helping you a bit. But anyway, it is about a road trip. My cousin Damon and I are good friends. Damon is 21 and I'm 22. Last month, Damon and I went on a road trip to visit friends in New York City. We live four hours away from New York City. We plan to go to the Empire State Building and Central Park. Oh, we were so excited to explore the whole Big Apple. Some people call New York City the Big Apple, but I don't know why. Damien drove because he likes to be in charge. He thinks he's a better driver than I am. He thinks he's a better driver than anyone else. I was more interested in the music we would listen to on our road trip. I picked out all of the songs and put them on my iPad. Damien and I both agree that I did a very good job. Nice job with the music, Marcus, Damien said. What, I said. I couldn't hear him because the music was too loud. Damien turned the music out. And here's Marcus. Okay. That's the one that's got the music picked up. Sweet music, Damien said. Man, this weekend is going to be awesome. I know, I can't wait to get there, I said. Hey, you're going to love this song. I started a new song that was all about the New York City. Nice, Damien said, and both of us smiled. The only problem was I had a headache. I was trying to ignore it, but it wouldn't go away. We stopped at a gas station so I could get a bottle of water. My mom says sometimes people get headaches just because they need to drink more water. But the water tasted funny, and I started to feel dizzy. Hey, buddy, get in your own lane, Damien yelled at another driver. Could you stop yelling so much, Damien? It's so annoying. And maybe we could turn the music down. It's getting too loud. Man, Marcus, you're cranky today, Damien said. Me? You're the one who's always cranky. You are cranky and loud, I said. Geez, maybe you should try to take a nap or something, Damien said as he changed lanes again. Fine, I said. I laid the seat back and closed my eyes. I felt weird, like I might get sick. I heard Damien call my name. I don't know what happened after that. And there's Marcus, he's lying down in the car. The next thing I remember was Damien holding my arm tightly. The car was stopped. Marcus, hey man, Marcus, he said loudly. He sounded very upset. Why was he squeezing my arm so tightly? Why was he yelling my name? Wait, I, I think he stopped shaking. Marcus, Marcus, are you okay? No, no, he didn't answer me. What should I do now, Damien said. Wait, yeah. I was confused. And then I figured out he was talking to somebody else on his cell phone. Suddenly I saw bright lights, like lights from an ambulance. Okay, they are here. Bye, Danny, and said. I heard him open his car door. Should I stay in the car? He asked someone. Yes, that is fine for now, said a woman. And then the woman opened the car door by me. It was hard to look at her. Everything looked bright and fuzzy. Sir, how are you? And now her hand was on my arm. What is his name? Marcus, Damien answered. Marcus, can you talk to me? She asked. I could see more clearly now. I saw she was wearing a uniform with a name tag. I saw the letters EMT. I remembered that EMT stood for emergency medical technician. These are people who help in emergencies. I got very upset and confused. All I could say was, hmm. I heard the woman tell Damien that they would need to take me to the hospital. I got more scared and started to breathe fast. It's okay, sir. You just need to stay calm, she said to me. And here's the ambulance that was coming. Okay. Hey, man, you're going to be okay. I'm with you. You're going to be okay, Damien said to me. I felt a little better when I heard Damien talking to me. Then I felt like I could talk. I asked, Damien? What's happened? Right after you tried to take a nap, Marcus, you started shaking. I pulled the car over to the side of the road and dialed 911. 
the ambulance is here now, Damien told me. I could tell he was upset too. Well, how long was I shaking, I asked. It felt like a long time, Marcus, but it was probably only about three minutes. And then he asked the EMT, what do you think happened? Sounds like he had a seizure. It was good he was already lying down in a soft place, she told Damien. Marcus, have you ever had a seizure before? She asked me. No. Why did this happen? I asked, and I could feel tears in my eyes. Well, right now, we don't know. We're going to take you to the hospital and make sure you're okay, she said. A man in an EMT uniform walked up next to the woman. Hi, buddy, he said to me. We're going to lay you on the stretcher so we can put you in the back of the ambulance. Well, I got nervous again. It's okay, Marcus. A stretcher is just a bed on wheels, the woman said. By the way, my name is Carla, and this is my co-worker, Todd. Should I go with you, asked Damien? Carla asked Damien if he felt okay to drive. Yes, I'm fine, Damien answered. Carla said, okay, it would be best to get your car off the highway. You can follow us to the hospital. As Carla and Todd put me in the ambulance, I saw Damien looking at me. He looked scared, and then he waved at me. Damien, I'm sorry, man, this is no good. I'm so sorry, I said. Hey, man, don't say you're sorry. I'm just glad you're okay. And I nodded my head. The ride to the hospital was short and bumpy. The lights in the back of the ambulance were bright. And then I thought about something and reached for the phone in my pocket. I should call my mom, I said. Damien said he was going to call your mom for you, Carla answered. Oh, okay. Oh, man, she's going to flip out. Poor Damien, I said. I felt like laughing, but I was so tired and my stomach was still upset. Yes, parents usually get upset when their child is sick, said Carla. Well, my mom makes a big deal of everything. She's going to freak out on Damien. I mean, really freak out, I said. When we got to the hospital, some nurses rolled me into a room. It had curtains instead of walls. The EMTs, Carla and Mike, Todd, excuse me, talked to the nurses. And then Carla walked over to me and said, you take care, Marcus. Thank you, I said. Carla and Todd waved goodbye and walked out of the room. A doctor walked in and started talking to the nurses, but no one looked at me. It makes me nervous when people talk about me like I can't hear them. I wish they would look at me and talk to me. Then everyone left the room except one nurse. Excuse me, I said, where am I? You're in a hospital, said one of the nurses. Yes, I know. I mean, what town are we in? My cousin and I left home in Harrisburg and we were driving to New York City when, when this happened, I told her. Oh, I see. You are now in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. You must have been driving for about an hour. My name is Rachel. Dr. Gibbs will be in to talk with you soon. Right now, we're going to do some blood tests to find out why you had a seizure. Are you afraid of needles, Marcus? Rachel asked. No, I said. Good. Do you have any health problems, she asked. Well, a few months ago, I found out I have diabetes. Do you think that could have caused this, I asked. Maybe, she answered. Diabetes means that your body has trouble keeping the right amount of sugar in your blood. If your blood does not have the right amount of sugar, it can cause a lot of problems. Sometimes if your blood sugar is too low, it can cause seizures. The blood test will help us know for certain what happened. And then she asked, can you tell me what you ate today? Well, I couldn't remember eating anything. I was too excited about going to New York City to think about food. Well, I guess I haven't had anything to eat today. Good heavens, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and that's a long time for anyone to go without food. For someone with diabetes, that can be dangerous, she said. How are you feeling right now, Marcus? Woozy and tired, I answered. Damien walked into the room. Rachel turned around and said hello. And then she asked him if he was a member of my family. Yes, I'm his cousin. Is it okay if I'm in here, asked Damien. Rachel smiled and looked at me. That's up to Marcus, she said. I nodded my head. Okay, I'm going to go get a few things and I'll be right back, Rachel said. She left the room and Damien walked over to me. I reached out my hand and Damien grabbed my hand with his. Hey man, are you all right, Damien asked. I guess so. They're going to do some more tests, but it seems like the seizure has something to do with my diabetes. I'm sorry, man. I ruined our road trip to New York City. Damien shook his head and looked at me. Marcus, 
You didn't ruin anything. We can go to New York City another time. You don't need to be sorry. I'm just glad you're okay. And then he added, I don't know how well your mom is doing though. I groaned and laughed a little. Did she flip out? Is she coming here? I asked. Yes, she flipped out, Damien said with a smile. And yes, she and your dad and your sister are on their way right now. Thanks for calling, I said. No big deal. I called the guys in New York too. They said they were sorry you got sick and they want you to feel better so we can plan another visit. Thanks, I said, but I felt so tired. Damien said he was going to go see if he could find a place to buy a cup of coffee. A minute later, the nurse Rachel came back and took some more blood. And when she left, it was quiet. And then I heard the sound of someone crying on the other side of the curtain. I realized it was Damien crying. He was talking to his mom. Mom, it was scary. He wouldn't stop shaking, Damien said. He sniffed and kept crying. I felt bad that I had scared Damien so much. I thought about how I would feel if I saw Damien have a seizure. I would be scared too. When he came back into the room, he pretended like he wasn't crying. I didn't mention it. I just told him I was glad he was there with me. Damien nodded and said, I wouldn't know what to do without you, ma'am. Well, I know what you mean, I said to Damien. He sat down in the chair by my bed and took a deep breath. We were both really tired and soon I fell asleep. I woke up when my family walked into the room. They hugged me and Damien a lot. Everyone thanked Damien for making sure I was safe. I could see my mom had been crying, but she was much calmer than I thought she would be. She just sat on the bed next to me and held my hand. My dad said she prayed the whole way to the hospital. Dr. Gibbs walked into the room. Hello, he said. Marcus, is this your family? I nodded. Is it okay if I talk about your test results in front of them? Yes, I said. Dr. Gibbs looked at me and said, I believe your seizure was caused by low blood sugar. He explained that my blood sugar was so low, it made my brain send too many messages to the rest of my body. And that's why I couldn't stop shaking, but he had good news. I could stop this from ever happening again by checking my blood sugar and eating regularly. On the drive home, my family and I had a long talk about my health. I realized it was my job to take care of my body. And if I didn't, I would have another seizure. So now I make sure I eat as often as I need to. I also eat healthy food instead of all the sweets I was used to eating. My family, including Damien, learned what to do in case I did have another seizure. I hope that doesn't happen again, but it's nice to know that someone will be able to help me if it does. Damien and I have planned another road trip to New York City for our next weekend. I'm going to bring plenty of healthy snacks to eat along the way. We are both excited to finally explore the Big Apple. And I'm going to find out why they call it the Big Apple. And there's a picture of an apple. And I bet he's going to be eating a lot more of fruits like apples from now on. OK, I have another really short story. And it's, so there's a follow through. It's with, about the prince with a lot to learn. Okay, there's a strange man who's suddenly come into the little prince's life. And there is the castle. It's huge. We'll find out what happens. Relax and be very still and listen. Listen carefully to this tale about a young prince who lived in a lavish palace in the desert. He loved to play all day with his friends. Mm, that is until one day when a stranger appeared and everything changed. Now, the prince and his friends were happily playing ball in the courtyard when they heard a knock on the big wooden door. They stopped their games in surprise, for this palace was so remote, there was seldom any visitors. Let's go and see who it is, shouted the young prince. A servant opened the door, and there stood a tall, bearded, simply dressed man looking down at him with a twinkle in his eye. Good morning, sir said the prince as he greeted the stranger. Have you come to see my father, the king? Good evening, your highness, replied the stranger. No, I'm actually here to see you. I'm going to be your teacher. Okay, so now we know who this person is. He's the prince's new teacher. Now the prince has never been to school before. This is gonna be a big change in his life. The young prince's smile faded. I see, he replied gravely. 
His parents had told him that someday he would have to learn all the things a king should know. He was just surprised the time had come so soon. The young prince bowed to the man who bowed in return, and then his new teacher followed the servant to be presented to the king. That night, when the queen was tucking the prince into bed, she noticed he was unusually quiet. She looked into his eyes and said, my dear son, you're growing into a man. When your father and I become too old to rule, our great nation will be in your hands. But I don't want to grow up, he replied. I know, she said, and she smiled and kissed him goodnight, but everything will be just fine. From then on, the prince spent his days learning about his country and the world beyond. He was introduced to important people and observed his father at work. In short, he was taught everything that made a man worthy to be a king. Years passed and the prince grew tall, strong, and wise. And then one morning, the teacher calmly closed the book and said, your highness, I have taught you all I know and my work here is done. It is time for me to leave. The prince had always known that this day would come and yet he loved and respected his teacher so much that he begged him to stay. But the teacher gently said it was time to move on. The prince cried as his teacher departed. The queen wiped away his tears and said, be at peace. Everything has its time and nothing lasts forever. Your days of study are over and soon you will be king. Before long, the prince was indeed king. He married a princess from a distant land and they had a beautiful daughter. One day when the little princess was playing with their friends, there was a knock on the castle door. Let's go and see who it is, she shouted. The door opened and standing there was a tall, bearded, simply dressed man looking down at her with a twinkle in his eye. And there he is. Okay, so we can unmute and talk about what these stories are that we just read. And hi, Molly, she's right here. Molly came in with us. Here we are. Oh, 